further discussion? Uh, Councillor Zamprogno. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm a school teacher by vocation, so I like to approach things in an evidence-based way. And the one thing that I've observed, and I'll direct these uh, remarks through you, Mr. Mayor, but, but to the gallery, I, I see that we're living through an anxious time, aren't we? Either your house or this house of somebody you know has been flooded for the first time in who knows how long, or you're a farmer down on the lowlands mm. and you're seeing your life and your livelihood literally being washed away before your eyes. And I know that emotions are high, but this is how we get through this together. And I know that there are some passionately held views on both sides. And I also know that there's some, some, there are some very sincerely misinformed people out there. Maybe it's because I focus on the debate that happens on social media where opinion is cheap, but we've got to do better than the job that we've been doing. So I, I recognise and respect you, Mr. Mayor, for bringing a motion that effectively reiterates a position that we're already holding and then adds to that a short-term measure that I think will, will make some difference. But we have to be really, really realistic about how modest that difference is going to be. If lowering the water level of Warragamba Dam by a reasonable amount, by an amount that the state government is possibly going to accede to, is going to change the resulted height of a flood by between 20 centimetres and a metre, then we're, we're comforting ourselves with something that isn't really getting the job done. We have to confront the reality that only a, a larger capital program like raising the dam is going to reduce the height of a bad flood by enough to make a real difference. But I do agree, and I'm a convert to this, that we have a strong moral obligation to act. And when I saw the figures that you presented in your mayoral minute, that even a modest decrease would save dozens of houses. I think back to that study that came out after the March 2021 flood, where we realised that had, they, had the dam been raised, 500 out of the 600 houses that were flooded would have been spared if we'd already gotten on with the job years ago like we should have. And I, I think to the people who passionately advocate for the sake of ecologies around Lake Burragarang or the Kaumung Valley or sacred Aboriginal sites, I hear you and laud you for your passion. But the thing is, you've got to look into the eyes of those hundreds and hundreds of families whose houses and livelihoods could have been spared by bold action and and tell them that they don't deserve the degree of safety that engineering and combined cleverness uh, can deliver them and tell them that they don't, don't deserve it. And I, I can't bring it in my heart to do that. I think this is the moral imperative that we have to act and to do whatever we can. The one thing that we know about the scientific reality of climate change is that it's going to deliver us greater variability of weather. That means times of even more rain and perhaps even times of more drought. And we know, for example, that the studies uh, tell us that if we had dropped the permanent water storage level by five metres, in February 2020, when we were coming to the end of a protracted drought and the dam was at about 48% full, if we had already had a policy in effect of keeping the water storage down by only five metres, the dam instead would have been at 26%. That's catastrophic for Sydney. Sydney would have effectively run out of water and the desalination plant wouldn't nearly have been able to keep up, not within a bull's roar. If we dropped the permanent water storage level by 12 metres, as some people advocated, then the, the dam would have been empty. Sydney would have had no water at all. That's just, the, that's just the blunt reality. And, and part of the misinformation that we have to counter is the difference between somebody reading something in a study and then suggesting that that was recommended. Something being contemplated and rejected forcefully is not the same as it being endorsed or recommended. 
just like there's a degree of misrepresentation about whether this is a stalking horse for development. I am not known in this chamber as being a friend to developers. I am against inappropriate development in all its forms. I support the raising of Warragamba Dam because we have a moral duty to keep our people safe in any way that we can. That's what this boils down to. There are other things that we can do about flood evacuation routes, public education, uh, other forms of resilience. Councillor Lyons Bucket and I went to a national conference and we learnt that 97% of all disaster funding in Australia is the ambulance at the foot of the cliff after the, after the disaster. Only 3% of the money we spent on disasters, 3% is spent before to stop the bloody disaster from happening in the first place. And nat natural disasters currently cost us $38 billion a year, and that cost is probably going to double within the next three or four decades. These are the blunt realities that we deal with. We live and trade on a floodplain, but by being wise, we can do something about it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor.